from above it looks like something out of science fiction, but this laboratory is being used to simulate what might someday be a reality for humankind among the stars. In late April, researchers from the University of Arizona spent a week experiencing what it's like to live on the lunar or Martian surface. At the close of an airlock door, the crew was sealed off and unable to communicate with the outside world. Their home, this capsule known as SAM, is one of the few places on Earth to be completely pressurised. Here we go. Their stay had them occupying the same narrow space and conducting research. So this here is the crew quarters and this is where we'll spend a considerable amount of time doing activities of daily living. We essentially have a, a vegetarian diet. So we have uh, freeze-dried or dehydrated foods. The goal is not to pretend like we're on Mars, but to actually do research projects, learn how crew dynamics work, how to uh, do water quality studies, air quality studies. The layout of the pod is very close to what astronauts will live in during their first lunar and Martian missions. As well as a technical module, there is a greenhouse where they can grow plants, including vegetables. The goal is to transition from mechanical methods of producing breathable air to methods where essentially plants and people are working together to create air that is breathable for both of us. The mission's IT specialist is blind, an example of how profiles of astronauts are becoming more diverse, with disabled people set to be among the crews of the future. People with disabilities have something to say just by their very nature of how to work and live in challenging environments. And some of the actual astronauts have lost their vision on spacewalks because of like fluid buildup or something, you know, a leak. And so how could you sort of, you know, tag team with somebody and, and rescue them? In the long run, the project director wants to extend the missions for periods of several months, but is wary of constraints. The Star Wars, the Star Trek and everything in between. We've become spoiled with how easy it makes it look. We can transition from one spacecraft to another through a seamless airlock. We can exit a spacecraft onto a planet and apparently all the planets have breathable air. It's just not like that in the real world. It's very, very difficult. NASA predicts a return to the moon within a few years and our first steps on Mars by the end of the 2030s. This may be too slow for multi-billionaires like Elon Musk. He wants his company SpaceX to bring a million colonists to Mars by 2050, along with entire domed cities on the red planet's surface. The prototype of these Martian colonies already exists here in Arizona. Called Biosphere 2, it aims to replicate Earth's ecosystems. We have a tropical rainforest system inside Biosphere 2, but it's not the only system that you're going to find inside. And just by going through this door here, we're in a completely different environment. We have a tropical ocean, we have a subtropical savanna, we have mangrove trees. Down beyond the mangrove trees, we have a thorn scrub, and then on the far end, we actually have our coastal fog deserts. In 1991, eight men and women sealed themselves in the biosphere for two years. Their experiments showed the limits of the model, with resources and morale running low quicker than expected. Microbes are like you and I, they take in oxygen, they give off CO2. So oxygen got really low, that they ended up actually making a the determination they had to add it in. The other thing was is the agricultural area, although it was extremely, it was very highly productive, it still didn't provide enough calories for those eight people who were sealed inside. So they were always hungry. Right now, the focus of Biosphere 2 is here on Earth. Scientists are studying it to improve their understanding of global warming. Experts agree environments like this will be crucial for living on Martian surfaces, but expect they will not be possible for at least another 150 years, meaning our dreams of colonizing other worlds may still be some way off. <laughs>